in grade 7, before we start our learning engagement for today, let us all stand first for the opening prayer. Juan Miguel, will you please lead the opening prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Juan Miguel. You can now be seated. Jennifer, is there any absentee for today? Thank you so much. Perfect attendance. Before we start our discussion for today, let us first review the topic discussed last meeting. Are you ready? Okay. Let's start with April Joyce. April Joyce, to test your memory, what is the topic discussed last meeting? Very good. Last meeting, we have discussed about carpentry tools. What is again carpentry tools? Yes, Fernando. Very good. When we say carpentry tools, these are implements manipulated by the hands to facilitate carpentry works. What are the different kinds of carpentry works? Will you give an example? Yes, Luito. Very good. Making a bed. What about Carlo? Very good. Making a chair or different types of furniture. Those are examples of carpentry works. And now, what we are going to do next is that I will be showing some actual tools or carpentry tools or picture and what you are going to do is to give the name and the function of that tool. Is that clear? Very good. What do you call this one? Very good. That one is what we call pull push roll. Just like this one. Pull push roll. What is the function of the pull push roll? Yes, Maricar. Very good. When we say pull push roll, it is a measuring tool used to measure long pieces of stack or long pieces of wood. What are the units that we can see on the flexible tape of the pull push roll? Yes, Carmina. Very good. So we have inch, foot or feet, we have meter, centimeters, etc. Did you know that during the ancient times, humans used their body parts to measure? Yes. Historical records indicate that the first unit of length were based on people's hand, feet, as well as arms. Just like for example, the nose of the king to the tip of the middle finger is equivalent to one yard. The span of his hand is equivalent to four inches. The span of his feet is equivalent to one foot or twelve inches. Same is true with our ancestors. Our Filipino ancestors, they used dangkal, dipa, hakbang, talampakan, at dakot, okay, in measuring. Okay? Let us now proceed to the next one. What do you call this one? Yes, Carmina. Very good. That one is a plumb bob. What is the usage of the plumb bob? Yes. Very good. When we say plumb bob, it is a kind of testing tool used to test the straightness of a post. There are two major parts of the plumb bob. This one is what we call the string. And then the other one, the metal part, is considered as the head. The head of the plumb bob, it has a pointed end for accurate alignment. Is that clear? Very good. What about this one? What do you call this carpentry tool? Yes, Justin? Very good. So this one is what we call the chisel. Will you please, um, Kim, give the function of chisel? Great! When we say chisel, it is an example of edge cutting tool wherein it is being used to trim and to shape wood. In other words, chisel is being used in wood curving. Like in Betis Pampanga, isn't it? The, uh, Betis Pampanga is very known when it comes to wood curving or duke products, just like this one. 
the primary tool being used in order to make this wood carvings or dukit of Venus Pampanga is a chisel. What about this one? What do you call this one? Yes, MK? Great! This one is what we call the claw hammer. I have here an actual object of hammer, a claw hammer. What is the function of the claw hammer? Yes, jelly. Very good. Claw hammer is a type of driving tool wherein it is used to drive and to pull out nails. It has two major parts, the handle and the head. So this part, the claw part of the claw hammer, it is used for pulling out nails. What about the face part of the claw hammer? It is used to drive, drive in nails. Is that clear? Very good. And lastly, what do you call this one? Yes, Stephanie. Very good. This one is what we call electric drill. What is the main usage of electric drill? Whens? Great! When we say electric drill, it is a portable power tool used to drill holes. Is that clear? Do you have any question about our past lesson? Very good. For our learning objective for today, number one, identify hazard and risks and list down hazard and risk in the workplace. And this is based from the most essential learning competencies. This lesson is specifically aims to number one, define hazard and risk. Number two, enumerate the types of hazard in the workplace. And number three, cite ways in preventing and minimizing exposure to workplace hazard. And now, let us start our first activity our first activity is entitled Pie Chart Analysis. Do you know what is pie chart? Yes? Very good. When we say pie chart, it is a type of graph that displays data in a circular graph. The pie chart will give you a snapshot of how group is broken down into smaller parts. Again, our activity is entitled as pie chart analysis. I will be presenting a pie chart and what you will do is to analyze the data of the chart. Questions will be presented after one minute. Is that clear? Okay, this is now the pie chart. Timer starts now. Time's up. Number one question. Who initiated the survey? Yes, Raven. Very good. The survey was initiated by DOLE or Department of Labor and Employment. Number two question. What is the pie chart all about? Yes, Jan. Very good. The pie chart shows the cause of accidents or injuries of the workers in the construction site. Number three question. Vanessa. Will you enumerate the causes of accidents and injuries of the workers in the construction site? Very good. So, the causes of accidents and injuries in the workplace are Number one, stepping on, striking, or struck by object. Number two, exposure to harmful substance. Number three, being struck by falling objects. And number four, exposure to electrical Karen. Number four question. What is the number one cause of workplace accident and injuries in the construction site? Yes, Limuel. Very good. The number one cause of workplace accidents and injuries in the construction site is stepping on, is striking against, or is struck by an object with a total of 493 cases. Number five question. In your own point of view, what do you think are the possible reasons why these workers experience this kind of accidents and injuries in the construction site? Will you give your insights, Mimi? 
great. Okay, so there are a lot of possible reasons. Some of them is number one, not focusing on work. Number two, not wearing safety gear. Number three, not following rules and regulations. And number four, no training before work. And last question, if you were on the shoe of the workers, what will you do in order for you not to experience those kinds of injuries and accidents in the workplace or in the construction site? Yes, Vanessa. Very good. Wearing safety gear. Aside from that, yes, um, Joshua. Okay, very good. Focusing on work. What about Raven? Very good. You need to follow rules and regulations set by the professionals or set by the employers. Very good class. With that, our discussion for today is all about hazard and risk in the workplace. Before we continue our discussion, let us first unlock the difficulties. When we say unlock the difficulties, these are a set of words that we will encounter along with our discussion. What we are going to do is that I will be presenting jumbled letters. And what will you do is to arrange those jumbled letters and you have to give your idea or insights about that word. Is that clear? Very good. Let's start. The first jumbled letters. Yes, Rimuel. Very good. The word is threat. So when you say threat, what does it mean? Yes, Stephanie. Very good. When we say threat, it is an expression of intention to inflict injury or damage. What about the next jumbled letters? Yes, Biolo. Very good. Probability. When we say probability, it is the possibility or the chance of something to happen. Okay? What about the next jumbled letters? Yes, Christian. Very good. The word is unsafe. So when we say unsafe, it means dangerous or something that is not safe. Diba? Something that is able to cause harm damage or lost what about the next one yes mk very good the word is frayed frayed is meaning damaged or shredded again our topic for today is about hazard and risk in the workplace do you have any idea about the word hazard class Yes, Marianne. Very good. When we say hazard, it is a term used to describe something that has a potential to cause harm or adverse effect to individual, to organization, to equipment, as well also to property. In other words, when we say hazard, it is a situation in the workplace that poses a level of threat to life, to health, and also to property. So what are the different sources of hazard? Yes, princess. Very good. Hazard comes from a wide range of sources, which may include number one, substance. Will you please, Ronel, give me an example of substance that can be a source of a hazard? Very good. So it can be water, it can be paint, it can be solvent, it can be cleaning materials, and many others. Aside from substance, material can also be a source of hazard. Uh, materials such as nails, screws, um, tools, and many others. Aside from substance, aside, aside from materials, we have also process as well as practices. So what are the different examples of process and practices that can cause hazard? Number one, just like for example, um, improper lifting of heavy loads. Diba? That is an example of process or practice. And lastly, living organism 
can also be a source of hazard. Living organisms such as viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, and other living organisms. Again, substance, material, process or practice, and living organism, those are sources that has the ability to cause harm or adverse health effect to a person. What do you think? Is this picture is an example of hazard? Very good. So this picture or wet floor is considered as hazard. So what is the source of hazard in this picture? Very good. The source of hazard is water. The water is spilled on the floor. It can create accident just like for example slips that can cause injury to a person. Is that clear? Very good. What about risk? Do you have any idea about the word risk class? Yes, Ronel. Very good. When we say risk, it is the chance or the probability that a person will experience adverse health effect caused by hazard. In other words, when we say risk, it is the health effect caused by hazard. Example. The risk of developing cancer from smoking cigarette can be expressed as cigarette smokers are more likely to die of lung cancer than the non-smokers. Meaning, a person who smoke has a high risk of developing lung cancer. Another example, lifting heavy objects. Lifting heavy objects is a kind of hazard. What is now the risk of lifting heavy object? The risk is having a back injury. Is that clear? Workplace hazard can be categorized into five. Number one, safety hazard. Number two, physical hazard. Number three, chemical hazard. Number four, biological hazard. And lastly, number five, we have ergonomic hazard. Let's start with safety hazard. Do you have any idea about safety hazard class? Yes, princess. Great. When we say safety hazard, these are unsafe working conditions that can cause injury, illness, and even death. Just like for example, anything that can cause slips or trips such as cords running across the floor or wet floor can be considered as a safety hazard. Question, what is the difference between slips and trips? Yes, James? Very good. When we say slips, you lost your balance because there's a too little friction between your foot and the walking surface. When we say trips, you lost your balance because you hit an object. So that is the difference between the two. Will you please um, give another example of safety hazard? Yes, Jane? Very good. So, anything that can cause falls, such as, walk, uh, such as working from heights, including working on a ladder, on a scaffolding, or any elevated work area. Another example. Yes, Angel. Very good. So, one good example of safety hazard is unguarded and moving machinery parts that a worker accidentally touch. Okay? Just like, for example, the circular saw is running and then one of the worker accidentally touch the circular saw. And that is safety hazard. And lastly, um, frayed cords or improper wiring can also be considered as a type of safety hazard the next one we have the physical hazard do you have any idea about physical hazard class yes john very good of all the hazard in the workplace physical hazard might the least obvious why because physical hazard can be any factors within the environment that can harm a worker without necessarily touching them like noise 
weather and radiation. Will you please, class, give me an example of physical hazard? Yes, Rode. Very good. One good example of physical hazard is high exposure to sunlight. For example, workers like carpenters or construction workers are exposed outside in the sun for a prolonged period of time wherein they can suffer physical hazard and that can cause long-term health effect to them. So one effect can be body fatigue or worse is heat stroke. Another example of physical hazard is exposure to loud noise coming from different types of equipment. So loud noise coming from this equipment can damage our hearing. Do you know the word decibels class? Yes, Stephanie. Great! When we say decibels, it is the unit used to measure the intensity of the sound. Did you know that the sounds between 0 to 80 decibels has no risk? For example, um, the intensity of the the intensity of the sound of whisper is 40 decibels. It has no risk. Another example, the intensity of the sound of the normal voice is 60 decibels. It has no risk. But the sounds above 90 decibels are damaging in our hearing. Just like for example, the sounds of the circular saw. Can you hear it? The sound of the circular saw is 90 decibels. So prolonged or constant hearing that loud noise coming from the circular saw can damage permanently or temporarily our hearing. Okay? That is why exposure to loud noise can be considered as physical hazard. The next type of hazard is biological hazard. Do you have an idea class about biological hazard? Yes, Jared. Very good. Biological hazard, it is also known as biohazard. In science, when we say bio, it means life. Meaning, when we say biological hazard, it is a type of hazard caused by living organism such as bacteria, virus, fungi, parasites, and many other living organisms. Will you please, class, give me an example of biological hazard? Yes, Erica. Very good. One good example of biological hazard is food poisoning. Okay? The food that is contaminated with different kinds of bacteria wherein a worker ate his or her lunch without proper hand washing. That can be considered as biological hazard. Any other example? Yes, Maria. Very good. Working with people who may have contagious disease or sickness. Just like for example, you don't know that your co-worker is infected with COVID-19 virus. So if you are not following safety protocols set by the IATF, you may be infected with that kind of virus. Is that clear? The next type of hazard is chemical hazard. Do you have any idea class about chemical hazard? Yes, Dexter. Great! When we say chemical hazard, it is a type of hazard caused by chemical substances in any form. It can be liquid, it can be solid, therefore, gaseous substances, dust, or even fumes. Will you please give me an example of chemical hazard? Yes, Erica. Very good. One good example of chemical hazard is exposure to different carpentry products that contains harmful chemicals like paints, solvents, varnish, and acids. Wherein, this type of products can cause illness, skin irritations, skin rushes, poisoning, allergic reaction, and even breathing problems. Is that clear? 
Very good. The last type of hazard is ergonomic hazard. Do you have any idea about ergonomic hazard class? Yes, Kyla. Very good. When we say ergonomic, it is the scientific study of people at work. When we say ergonomic hazard, it occurs when the type of work, the body positions, and the working conditions put a strain in the body. In simple words, ergonomic hazards, these are factors in the working environment or in the workplace that can harm our musculoskeletal system. What do you mean by musculoskeletal system? The musculoskeletal system is the one that is responsible for our movements, which includes our bones, our muscles, our tendons, our ligaments, and even our soft tissues. Ergonomic hazards happens because of overuse of our muscles. It can also be uh, because of bad posture as well as repeated movement. Will you please, class, give me an example of ergonomic hazard in the workplace? Yes, Dexter. Very good. Frequent lifting of heavy loads is one good example of ergonomic hazard because it can cause back injury. Another example. Yes, Clara. Very good. Improper way of lifting object or bad posture when it comes to lifting object can also be considered as ergonomic hazard. And lastly, another example of ergonomic hazard is repeated movement or repetitive movement. For example, um, you are sewing, okay, using a crosscut saw. You are cutting a wood using a crosscut saw. So frequently doing that repetitive, uh, repetitive movement or repeated movement can cause sore in the muscle of your shoulder. Is that clear? Very good. Will you please repeat the five types of workplace hazard? Yes, Kent. Very good. So number one, safety hazard. Number two, physical hazard. Number three, biological hazard. Number four, chemical hazard. And number five, ergonomic hazard. But the question is, how can we minimize the exposure to workplace hazard? Will you please give your insights and suggestions in minimizing the exposure to workplace hazard? May I call on Dexter? Great! One way of minimizing exposure to workplace hazard is by being focused and by being alert. For example, during the work hours, you must remain focused and alert to anything that may be dangerous. If you see, hear, or smell anything odd, take note. If you think it could be hazard, tell someone like your supervisor or your employer because they are the one who is responsible in fixing the hazard. But sometimes, you may be able to fix simple hazard by yourself as long as you don't, you don't put yourself and others at risk. For example, you can pick up things like metal scrap, a nail, or a screw on the floor, or you can dry up a spilled water on the floor. So those are examples of simple hazard. But if the hazard is very complex, just like for example, um, damaged machineries or equipment, exposed chemicals, another is frayed wirings or electrical wirings, you have to tell it to your employer or supervisor because those are complex hazard that needed professional to fix it. Like in school, if you encountered different hazard inside the classroom, you tell your teachers. Is that clear? Very good. Will you please give another suggestions or insights on how we can minimize the exposure to workplace hazard. Yes, Erica. Very good. By wearing PPE. So what do you mean by PPE? Yes, Kyla. Great. Personal protective equipment. So what is the function or usage of PPE? 
Yes, Clara. Very good. When we say personal protective equipment, these are equipment worn by the workers to minimize exposure to hazard that can cause injuries, illnesses, and even accidents. Like what we are doing right now in this time of pandemic, we are wearing masks, we are wearing face shield, and we are following the minimum health protocol set by the IATF in order for us not to be infected with the virus. Same as true with our workers, with our carpenters, with our construction workers. It is a must for them to wear PPE in order to minimize their exposure to workplace hazard that can cause injuries, illnesses, and accidents. And now, what are the different examples of PPE or personal protective equipment? What do you call this one? Yes, Dexter? Very good. This one is hard hat. What is the usage of hard hat? Yes, Maria. Great. When we say hard hat, it is used to protect our head from falling objects. What about the next one? What do you call this one? Yes, Clara. Very good. This one is a goggles or eye protection. Stephanie, what is the function of goggles? Very good. Goggles or eye protection, it is used to protect our eyes from flying debris like sodas or liquid chemical particles. What about the next one? Yes, Crystal. Very good. This one is face mask. What is the function of face mask? Yes, Jared. Very good. Face mask. It is used for us not to inhale fumes, vapor, smoke, dust from different materials and substances. What about the next one? Yes, Stephanie. Very good. This one is hearing protection, such as earplugs or earmuffs. What is the usage of hearing protection? Yes, Candy. Very good. It is used to protect our ears from loud noise. What about the next one? What do you call this one? Yes, Kyla. Great. This one is gloves. What is the usage of gloves? Yes, Rose and. Very good. Gloves, it is used to protect our hands from cuts, scrapes, as well as puncture. What about the last one? Yes, Rose and Ulet. Very good. This one is safety shoes. What is the usage of safety shoes, Maria? Very good. It is used to protect our feet from sharp materials, such as nails, screws, and metal scrap. Is that clear? Very good. Again, PPE. These are equipment worn by the workers to minimize the exposure to workplace hazard. Let us now proceed to our next activity. Our next activity is entitled as Picture Identification. I will be showing some pictures and you will identify what kind of hazard it is. Is that clear? Very good. Are you ready? Let's start with the first picture. What kind of hazard is this? Yes, Kyle. Very good. This one is trips. And trips is an example of safety hazard. What about the next one? Yes, Joanna. Very good. This one is an example of physical hazard. What about the number three picture? Yes, Joanne. Very good. This one is an example of biological hazard. What about the next picture? Yes, Denise. Very good. This one is an example of chemical hazard. What about number five? Yes, Stephanie. Very good. This one is an example of ergonomic hazard. What about number six? Yes, Justin. Very good. This one is an example of physical hazard. What about... Number seven. Yes, Jelly. 
Great. This one is an example of biological hazard. What about number eight? Yes, Jasmine? Very good. It is an example of ergonomic hazard. What about the number nine picture? Yes, MK. Great. This one is an example of safety hazard. What about the last one? Yes, Christian. Very good. The last one is an example of safety hazard. Very good. Grade 7. Our next activity is entitled as See If, Think If, Do It. A mini tour inside the house. What you are going to do is that have a short tour inside the house and list down five possible hazards you can see. And then cite ways on how to minimize the exposure to those kind of hazards. You have three options on how to do it. Option number one, if you have gadgets with internet access or data, you can have a simple vlog or record a video about our activity. After recording, you upload it in our FB private group. Option number two, if you have gadgets but no internet access at home, you will just capture images about different hazards you can see inside your house. And then, there will be a presentation of output tomorrow in our sharing time. Option number three, if you don't have any gadgets as well as internet access at home, you will just list down all the possible hazards and cite ways on how to minimize the exposure to those kind of hazards. I will give you an activity sheet after our discussion. Reminder, there will be a presentation of output tomorrow in our sharing time. To wrap up our discussion for today, I will be showing a clip video from Balitang Tanghali of GMA News TV. After watching the video clip, give your insights about it. Is that clear? Very good. This is the video clip. Swerte raw na nakasuot ng harness ang mga ito kaya't nakaiwas sa lubhang kapahamakan. Pero kung tutuusin, last resort lang daw dapat na mga manggagawa ang mga safety equipment. Ibig sabihin, bago pa man simula ng trabaho, alam na ng isang trabahador kung ano-ano ang mga sakunang maaaring mangyari at kung paano magre-react sa mga ito. Ang gusto natin sa safety, freedom from accident. Wala tayong aksidente. Sabi nga natin, pag wala kang aksidente, you are safe. So ang tanong, Paano mo may iwasan ang aksidente? Meron tayong tatlong pamamaraan dyan. Unang-una, ma-identify mo muna ano yung hazards, ano yung panganib. Pangalawa, gano'ng kadelikado to. Pangatlo, paano mo iiwasan o paano mo matatanggal itong aksidente na to, itong hazard na to. May mga bagay ka na, uy, hindi naman mangyayari to eh. Pero what if pa nangyari to? So kailangan, expect mo dun. Eh paano nga pala pag biglang gumalaw yung gondola? Cedric, any volunteer from the class? about his or her insights about the video clip? Yes, Kyle. Very good. What about the other one? Yes, Denise. Great. What about Ashley? Very good. So meaning, accidents, illnesses, and injuries caused by different workplace hazard may happen anytime. That is why you have to be alert, you have to be focused, you have to follow safety rules and regulation as well as to wear personal protective equipment in order to minimize the exposure to different workplace hazards such as safety hazard, physical hazard, biological hazard, chemical hazard, and ergonomic hazard. Is that clear? Very good. And now, grade 7, are you ready for a short quiz today? Very good. Kindly get one answer sheet and please pass it to your classmate. As you can see, in your answer sheet, there's a picture. So you have three things to do. Number one, encircle all the possible hazards you can see. And then number two, you have to identify what kind of hazard is that. And number three, you have to give some solutions or sight ways on how to minimize the exposure from that kind of hazard. I will give you 10 minutes to finish that activity. Are you ready? Very good. Timer starts now. 
Very good, grade 7. Most of you got a perfect score. Reminder, grade 7, that there will be a presentation of output in our activity entitled See It, Think It, Do It in our sharing time tomorrow. Don't forget that. And with that, have a nice day. I hope you've learned a lot in our discussion for today.